We are all rightly shocked and saddened by the abduction and murder of young Sarah Everard. We really are. Uh, I'm particularly surprised, I think, that the person that has been, and we mustn't prejudge this, but the person that has been arrested and charged is actually a member of one of the elite groups from the Metropolitan Police. And it has touched a chord. Note Kate turning up quietly, discreetly, at Clapham Common yesterday and laying a couple of bunches of daffodils. What a contrast she is as a Duchess to the other Duchess that spoke to us last Sunday. But we're not just talking about abduction and murder. We're now beginning to talk more broadly about women being safe on the streets and in particular about the behaviour and attitudes of men. And that is why we saw the vigil taking place on Clapham Common. And the big round now is about the way in which it was policed. Several arrests and the police appearing to get quite heavy handed. Indeed, Sadiq Khan demanding an inquiry, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, demanding an inquiry as to how this was policed. Now, I do understand that because this is the very same police force who took the knee last year to BLM protesters who went on to desecrate some of our national monuments. So there does appear to be an inconsistency here. But there's a parallel with the BLM uprising last year following the murder, the death of George Floyd. And it's one that I think we need to talk about. Following that BLM uprising, we've now had month after month of white people being told they are guilty. Those of us that are white, we have white privilege. And some of this nonsense is being taught in our schools. It isn't healing any racial divides. All it's actually doing is dividing black and white people and hugely counterproductive. And there is a danger that in the debate about this abduction and murder and more broadly how, women, how safe women are on the streets, all of which is a valid debate, there's a danger we go way too far in our criticism of men and broaden this out from bad people to men as a group. Just see this from Baroness Jenny Jones in the House of Lords. I would argue that at the next opportunity for any bill that's appropriate, I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6pm, which I feel would make women a lot safer and discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. Now, was she being altogether serious? Was she being provocative? Why, you might ask, are people like this even in the House of Lords at all? So perhaps we don't take that too seriously. But what about this? The First Minister of Wales, Mark Drakeford, being pressed by the BBC on whether he could contemplate in Wales putting that curfew in place for all men. Here he is. Some people have said sometimes that there should be a curfew on men for a period of time. Is that something that you would consider? It wouldn't be on the top of the list of things that we would consider because it would be at the very best uh, a temporary intervention. But you now, would, if were yeah, I'm sorry, to be clear, the, the, I, you, you say you wouldn't, it's not the top of your list. Uh, I can only take it from that, that you could not rule out that being a, a, a potentially something that you would do? If there were a crisis uh, and you needed to take dramatic action that allowed that crisis to be drawn down, then of course you'd be prepared to consider all measures that would make a difference. Yes, that's right. The First Minister of Wales, if there was a crisis, if there was a scare, something akin to the Yorkshire Ripper, 40 years ago, or perhaps the Ipswich murderer who was on the run just a few years back. He would be prepared to bring, to bring into place a curfew for all men. Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, now telling us that men need to be educated better and that misogyny must become a crime. So I can feel another hate crime, speech crime, thought crime, perhaps coming down the track. And all of this is in danger of alienating men and saying that men as a group are dangerous. That's rather like saying teenagers are dangerous because they might be carrying a knife, they might stab you. Or saying Muslims are dangerous because they're all going to be jihadi terrorists. When it's not true in the case of teenagers, it's not true in the case of Muslims, and it certainly isn't true 
in the case of all men. Yes, there are some who behave terribly, but we need to get a sense of perspective on this before we start rushing to legislation and teaching kids at school that it's wrong to be male, because that, I fear, is where this debate is beginning to go. There are some bringing the voice of balance and reason to it. This is what Davina McCall had to say. And that's right and that's sensible. We must not allow the tragic abduction and murder of this young woman to turn into something that would be to demonise men. We've just gone too far with all of this woke nonsense.